Porter Jr. to get on the floor and participate at this level. Kuzma, guarded by Porter, fires up an air ball. It's personal. I'm telling you. Howard and Millsap. Mm, yeah, that's a shot there. Shoulder right to the face of Millsap. He wasn't having it. Interesting. Porter on the cut. Oh. Shot clock off. Last shot opportunity for L.A. Davis, he'll pull the three. Oh, Davis hits it with one second left. I have said this multiple times whenever I would make a video on the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, on the Western Conference Finals. And it's the fact that the Denver Nuggets are truly a remarkable team. And not only are they remarkable in the terms of the talent they have, but they're remarkable at developing their talent. And they're even more remarkable at how resilient they are when they are on the court. The way Michael Malone has Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, and even Michael Porter Jr., who hasn't even played a complete NBA season yet, just having them compete against the Los Angeles Lakers needs to be acknowledged, and we definitely will be doing that in this video. But unfortunately, LeBron James is LeBron James. Anthony Davis is a remarkable talent, and the Lakers have had significantly more experience than the Denver Nuggets going into this series. So while it was a cute little story to potentially see the Nuggets get back into a 3-1 to situation, there was no chance for them to come back from a 3-1 to series lead. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Mike here. Before we get to the content, just wanted to remind you guys that I am giving away a PlayStation 5 on my Twitter account. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on my notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we've got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one two one two what's going on everybody guys I didn't release a video on game four because well I didn't really like how game four went down I didn't like the fact that the Lakers were asking for more free throws for LeBron James and he ended up getting more free throws in that game and I didn't want to come off as a you know a Laker fan that was literally ranting about the fact that the Lakers won I, I thought that'd be a little bit weird so I skipped that video altogether that and I kind of needed to give my voice a break but in this video, I want to discuss the Denver Nuggets future and what to expect from the Lakers in the future and what could potentially ruin the Lakers going forward. So let's start with the Denver Nuggets because I want to remain impartial over here. The Denver Nuggets were not supposed to get here. You know, like they were a very good team in the regular season. I didn't think they were a team that would make it to the Western Conference Finals. I didn't think they would be good enough to beat Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and the Los Angeles Clippers. I didn't even think they would be able to come back from a 3-1 to series lead against the Utah Jazz in the first round. So the fact that they were able to do that in of itself is very impressive. And without a doubt, the effects of this playoff run will be felt for future years to come for the Denver Nuggets. I feel like Jamal Murray now has a new edge that he plays with as a result of this playoff run. It seems like whenever the chips are down, you could depend on him to go out there and get you baskets and fight through whatever it takes to hopefully win you games. And even when the chips were down the most, it seemed that way. It seemed like Jamal Murray was doing whatever it took to will his team to a win. And I saw a bunch of other stuff that surprised me. Throughout this entire series, a constant's been Jeremy Grant's productivity on the floor. He's averaged at least 20 points per game in almost each and every game where the Denver Nuggets face the Los Angeles Lakers. And here's the thing. I know I say this a lot as well, but you have to understand that Michael Porter Jr. is technically a rookie. And as a rookie, he did show off some of his you know, sides of being a rookie, although he's not really a rookie. Technically, he is a rookie. He did show off some of his inexperience, but he also showed that potential that had a lot of scouts tap him as a potential top three pick in the 2018 NBA draft, although he fell until much later due to injury concerns. 
And because of those injury concerns, he didn't get as much play time as he should have during the regular season. And I guess the Nuggets kind of felt that in these playoffs. Nikola Jokic is a fantastic player. And at the end of the day, all these players are very, very young and have a long way to go before they fulfill their maximum potential. But regardless, I'm very impressed with how the Nuggets fought. It's not easy to make it to the Western Conference Finals, especially considering how deep the Western Conference are. So there's a lot to be said about the Nuggets. The Houston Rockets didn't make it. The Los Angeles Clippers didn't make it. The OKC Thunder sure as hell didn't make it. The Utah Jazz didn't make it. Out of all those teams that we were hyping up a year ago, well, over a year ago in the offseason, crazy how the 2019 offseason was literally 14 months ago and we're still trying to crown a champion for that season. At the end of the day, the Denver Nuggets were the ones that made it to the Western Conference Finals to face LeBron James, and that's a lot to be proud about and to hang your hat on. The reason why the Lakers won, it was apparent throughout the entire series. You saw moves like, I don't even in this game, Dwight Howard getting into it with Paul Millsap, who's the oldest and probably most seasoned player on the Nuggets, who had the most playoff experience on the Nuggets. You know, you saw Laker bigs and experienced players on the Lakers consistently get into the heads of the Denver Nuggets. And that's just the experience factor that I keep telling you guys about. That's exactly what I keep mentioning. And that's why the Lakers made it to the NBA Finals. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, there's a combined like 20 NBA Finals appearances between multiple members of the Los Angeles Lakers. And I believe that's what got them to the point that they're at. So as a Laker fan, I am extremely happy. You know, after everything we've gone through throughout this past season with the death of Kobe Bryant, with the COVID pandemic, with the past seven seasons that we've already be, been suffering, you know, Dwight Howard part one, Steve Nash's injuries, the, the time that we had Wesley Johnson, Nick Young, and Jody Meeks in our starting lineup, Kendall Marshall as a point guard, D'Angelo Russell snitching on Nick Young, during his rookie season for cheating on Iggy Azalea. We have a video about that, by the way. You should totally look it up. It's definitely epic. I feel like we are finally getting vindicated for those tough years, and I really hope that they could finish it off in the NBA Finals and bring a championship home. However, there is one thing that could absolutely decimate the Lakers, and this one thing is kind of why I'm so terrified. And it's probably something that's going to haunt the Lakers throughout the next like couple of years. And that's the fact that Anthony Davis appears to be literally flirting with a crazy career altering injury most of the time when he's taking the floor. And the fact that the Lakers were willing to play him tonight kind of scared me. I don't know how you game plan around a player that shows these signs of potential injury concerns, but that's probably my only concern. And I really hope it doesn't get to a point where he's in the NBA Finals and he gets injured right when we need him the most. Aside from that, th there's nothing else that the Lakers should really be intimidated of. I'm obviously anticipating them to meet the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals, and it should be a fantastic showdown because you have Eric Spolstra's well-coached squad going up against Frank Vogel's defensive mind. So it should be very interesting to see how that plays out, assuming that's what ends up happening. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about the future of the Denver Nuggets? How do you think the NBA Finals are going to go? And what do you think this means for LeBron James's legacy? Because LeBron James has just made it to his 10th NBA Finals and his first coming out of the Western Conference. Aside from that, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my notifications if you enjoy the content. There's probably not going to be a video tomorrow night. I'm going to be taking Sunday and Monday off for religious reasons. I'm going to be doing a fast. I should be back on Tuesday, so if you don't see an upload from me, that's why. I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.